Hey guys, it's Reed. Um, I decided to make a tutorial for you guys today, so I'll try to make this as fast as possible. This is a Angry Birds tutorial on how to pull the bird back in the slingshot and of course launch it. I'll show you all the details that we included in our real life Angry Birds on our channel. And I'll teach you how to make it just like ours. So, um, yes, like I said, I'm going to make it really quick and I will just do this in steps for you guys so that you won't have to watch a 15 minute long tutorial. Okay, so once you've imported your footage, all you really need for this effect that I'm doing right now is a bird, a dot that follows behind the bird, um, this one right here is the slingshot. All this can be found on Google Images or various websites you guys can find it easily. And then I just made this in Photoshop as the little pad that the bird sits on. So just first import those. So your next step will be to position all of your footage on the composition. So drag it down or however you please. And yeah, I'll trim it later, but basically I gotta do is just click and then hold shift to keep the proportions straight. And line it up to about where your fingers pinch and now you have it so that right when you grab it the bird should be right there okay so now just take your bird and drag it down and once you've done that position him and scale him down to about where he would rest in the slingshot which is about that size if not maybe a little bigger so just pop them down right there. Um, next what you have to do is take the slingshot, see how he is in front of this area when you want him to be inside so it looks like he's actually sitting in the slingshot. Take this slingshot and say control D to duplicate it then drag this above the bird. Now of course he's cut off in the front too. So just go up to your pen tool and draw a quick mask around this part right here and you can adjust later but right there so now it has masked out this part and it looks like he's sitting in the slingshot next just take the little pad that he sits in on the slingshot and drag it above the bird actually yeah I guess above the bird would work position it to where you want it and of course scale it down yeah I apologize for my hands shaking right now. I am using my mouse and normally I use the trackpad for some reason that helps but the reason I'm using my mouse is because my camera is in front of my laptop so just drag it to about where he would look like he's sitting in it and then of course you can position it around using the keys on your keyboard. So now it looks like he's sitting in the pad. Your next step should be tracking, so go over to Window, make sure your tracker's pulled up, then say Layer, New, Null Object. This will record the tracking data. So go down to here, um, click Track Motion on your source footage. Now take this thing right here, which is the tracking point. I would recommend choosing like maybe your thumb or like in between your fingertips. It's good to pick areas that have like the most difference in contrast. Then draw that about there and that about there. It doesn't really matter. The tracker is pretty basic and the bird doesn't have to stay exactly in your fingertips. Click the play button and it will try its best to track to the points that you just gave it. Once it's done tracking, click apply. Then it'll give you this little window that says that. Click OK. And then since it just opened all this, I'll just go down with it. Now you've got all these lines back from where the bird has been tracked. So that's the null when you go like this and see your bird isn't actually pulled back with the tracking data so about from right here take your bird and your pad both and this is the parenting tool this crazy squiggly line thing just pull that up and drag it up to the null 4 layer and then right here pad also drag that up so now when you go like this the bird and the no uh the bleh, the bird and the pad are both attached to your fingertips. So now you have your bird smoothly pulling back as you pull. And then of course once you release it, you'll have to just 
um, make the bird go forward. I'll show you that in like one second. Okay, so in this step, just take the pad and the bird right here and then say Control Shift D and that'll cut both of those layers in half. Now just we'll go ahead and do the pad first. Um, click this little arrow then click transform the little arrow next to that then say position and then if you keyframe over I'd say about maybe four frames just um, grab this guy and move him to where it started now move back those four frames and then go to the bird which is right here and do the exact same thing except of course the bird's gonna launch many more frames so just click position go however many frames you think it'll take for the bird to make it across the screen and then just launch him up um, there are these like big dots on this part right here this line so like this big dot you can actually curve how far up the bird goes so I don't know just pull it up and give him a little curve like that so now when you play it back it actually woo he shoots up into the air um so yeah that's how you get the bird to launch and the pad to go up with it okay so one of your last major steps is beams beams okay so yeah basically <laughs> sorry for the over enthusiasm Colin Ross you know those beams those beams are important anyways <laughs> What you gotta do is just go up to um, effect, but first, of course, make a new solid layer. And then you'll eventually need to duplicate this, but for now, I'll just say effect beam. Okay, so if you can see, like, this little line that it makes is a beam from After Effects. Change this to a sort of brown, kind of try to match that this right here use your little color picker you can match this part right on the screen okay so now you've got yourself a beam and all you have to do really is just go to the I think there's length right here and that'll stretch it to the two points that you're gonna use and then of course turn the softness down and that'll make it very blurry and then you can bump these up to maybe 16 I'm thinking yeah uh, maybe maybe 18 okay so now that this rope that you have is 18 um, as 18 whatever pixels thick uh, just pull it down and then go back to where your bird was uh, getting launched right about there if you notice it's actually in front of the bird right now so drag this down to I think this is this is right about right there and then um, from the beam make sure you click starting point and end point to move when, so that when you pull it back those little keyframes will animate it as you pull it back so pull it to where you're about your farthest point back and drag this guy to the back right about there so now it looks like a rope is pulling him back and then of course when you move up and he needs to be launched you can just control shift D it and move your beam up oh, move your beam up as the bird is launched actually as the pad is launched the pad on this one is actually lagging a little behind the bird but these little things can be edited um ah whoops undo that control shift d first you just gotta cut it pretty much every time you move it and this doesn't take that long so ah. And there you have it. That would be about the maximum point to where it would go up. So now it'll just 
launch with the bird. Okay, so once that looks nice and smooth, well, I went ahead and just added the second one. Um, and the bird launches, um, basically what you have to do is just as it goes along, which this is probably definitely the easiest step, but sometimes time consuming depending on how long the range is. Take your dot, drag it in, and then, of course, resize it like that, and then put it behind the bird. And then from there, you just um, move the position in the front, and then once you do that, every time the bird goes by, you just add another dot. And yeah, I'm not going to go too far into that, because I don't want to bore you guys to death, but I'll show you one last detail that'll make it look good. So basically, the last thing you can do to add a lot of detail is basically just take your slingshot and control D to duplicate it then go over to effects um, blur and sharpen add a Gaussian blur turn the blurriness up a lot wait let me just drag it out turn the blurriness up a ton then go to um, effect color correction brightness and contrast and turn the brightness all the way down and the contrast down, uh, I guess it doesn't do much, but then hold W to rotate it. And depending on where your shadow is going, I'll just, I guess, do that. Pull it over like that to the bottom of it. And then um, this is already an effect that's on it under transform opacity. Just turn that down a lot, and I'm probably going to blur it a little bit more. And from there, you blur it and turn the opacity down, and you can make it look like the um, slingshot is casting a shadow. So that helps a lot, just kind of make like a 3D perspective to um, the video. And it, I don't know, just it just adds a little finer detail, it makes it look a lot better. Um, yeah, so this about it, that's about it. Um, leave comments on what tutorial you want me to do next, and. Um, if you do make an Angry Birds video, after this date, just post it um, and show me what you've learned from this and post it as a video response. So that'll be really cool. I'd like to see what you guys have done with this. Of course, this isn't the best example of an Angry Birds. If I was actually trying, I would have made it look a lot better, but it's, it is what it is. So yeah, peace, guys.